So you moved in with Norman Mailer right yeah. down the street here? Mm -hmm. The same, same place. In the Brooklyn apartment she shared with her literary rock star husband. I came here in 1975. Norris Church Mailer, a small town Arkansas girl, would live a large and glamorous life. Where did you get the, the frame from? You know, I got that at a gallery. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning author. She became a model, an artist, and his muse. The apartment was sold recently. Norris Church Mailer died last fall, three years after her husband. She was frail, fighting cancer, and had only months to live when we interviewed her. I realized in pretty short order, well, if I'm going to write his story, I've got to write my story, too. But she had just published her memoir. Did you sort of feel like you needed to put all of those memories someplace? I did. I did. I wanted to, I guess I wanted to kind of selfishly relive the good ones and maybe try to sort out the bad ones. In what would be her last major interview, she talked about life with the charismatic but combustible Mailer, the author who won Pulitzers for both the Armies of the Night and the Executioner's Song, but who also famously stabbed the second of his six wives with a penknife. You say in the book, why had I been so consumed by this old, fat, bombastic, lying little dynamo? Right. Kind of sums it up. <laughs> it does. That's what he was totally. <laughs> but I don't know. I just loved him. <laughs> no accounting for taste. <laughs> As she was fond of saying, I bought a ticket to the circus. I don't know why I was surprised to see elephants. Born Barbara Jean Davis, she grew up in Arkansas and at age three was crowned Little Miss Little Rock. By 1975, she was a divorced high school art teacher with a young son when Norman Mailer came to town to promote a book. So how would you describe the chemistry that occurred? Well, there was something that happened from the moment I walked in the door. It was, it was the old our eyes met across the crowded room kind of thing. I mean... She was 26. He was exactly twice her age. But she followed him to New York, changed her name, signed with the Wilhelmina Modeling Agency, and became a successful artist and writer herself. But most of all, she became famous for enduring Norman Mailer, as the author himself said on this program 10 years ago. She's given a certain dignity to my life that I never had before. Well, in that now I'm not a madman, now I'm an established family man. It wasn't easy. He was on his fourth wife, living with another woman, mm -hmm. had seven kids. Mm -hmm. I assume you did the math. I did the math. It was, it was complicated. Not a lot of people would sign up for seven stepchildren. Yeah. What made you embrace that? They were just great kids. They, they embraced me. I, I liked them, and I wasn't trying to be their mother. I wasn't trying to be their boss. I wasn't trying to, you know, I just wanted to have fun with them. But the reaction of New York society wasn't quite as warm. People used to come up to me and say, which wife are you? And you would say? I would say, well, I'm the only one, or I'm the last one. Norris and Norman became a literary it couple. They had a son together, and Mailer, a famous philanderer, was at first, at least, a reformed man. He wanted to try monogamy, he said. He wanted to, he wanted <laughs> to see how deep a relationship could go when you didn't cheat and you didn't lie and you didn't run around and you were totally honest with somebody and he wanted to try it with me. And I bought it and um, I think for about eight years that, that really was what happened. In 1991, she had her suspicions when she went into his studio. And of course, the first thing I did was go through his desk drawer and it's just full of letters and pictures and stuff from a number of women. I mean, not just one or two, but a lot. Your whole world must have blown up that day. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah, it's just your world just comes crashing down. Mailer pleaded with her to stay, using what she says was a favorite phrase of his. Rise above it. Rise above it. He said, you should have married an angel. I don't have any wings. You can stop giving me stuff to rise above. <laughs> What's yours, dear? But she did stay. Did you have a good day? Uh, fairly good, not great. They were together 33 years. I did love my life. I loved my kids. I didn't want to break up 
another family. In her memoir, Church wrote, If I had left, as I seriously considered only once, I would have always wondered what he was up to, and I would have been miserable in my curiosity. We had a good relationship. We just had a different one. It, you know, I never really trusted him again, but uh, I still loved him. In 2001, when Sunday morning visited the Mailers, Norris had just been diagnosed with cancer. Over the next decade, she survived six major operations. At one point, as I was going into surgery, the doctor said to me that I had an, a 99% chance of not coming through the surgery. And so I kind of said goodbye to everyone, and everyone was there, and, you know, it was... I woke up, and on a little note on my pillow that my son had left saying, Mom, you're the one percent. When cancer finally took her last November, Norris Church Mailer was only 61. But she'd hung on long enough to finish her book and share the story of what she called a real and painful and wonderful life. You put up with a lot. <laughs> Maybe I do have wings. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>